Afternoon folks and welcome back to the WTF Garage and uh, this afternoon I'm going to show you my latest acquisition, the latest piece of kit for the WTF and it's this thing here which is a Harrison M300 lathe and you're probably asking uh, what do I know about lathes, uh, absolutely squat all. So uh, this is going to be a nice uh, learning exercise, if nothing else. Anyhow, uh, this lathe, uh, I recently got it at an auction, one of the Ramco auctions. Uh, and I, It was one of three that was uh, on offer. And uh, this one was probably the one that was in the worst condition, so that's probably why I picked it up for a reasonable price. There were two other ones um, which were in much better condition than this, or well, certainly cosmetically and uh, they went for a hell of a lot more money. So I think uh, just an initial inspection, although it looks a bit grotty, we're going to have a closer look. Um, I think mechanically it's probably all right, uh, from what I can tell at the moment, with my limited knowledge, obviously. Uh, so let's have a quick uh, look at this uh, beast of a lathe, and uh, we'll show you uh, what I've done and what I've got to do. So this is the Harrison M300 lathe and from my research this is quite a beast of a lathe. Um, I think it's, uh, well, it's at least I would say a metre if not a little bit more between the tailstock which I've removed and the uh, chuck. Now this is a three phase uh, lathe, so that, that's obviously something we're going to have to have a have to deal with because I don't have three phase here. And as you can see, I've already taken quite a few of the bits off uh, to, to uh, start restoring and cleaning them all up. So what we're going to do is have a quick closer look and uh, show you some of the things that I've noticed and what we've done so far. So the first problem with this lathe is the sheer size of it and moving it uh, around is a logistical nightmare. So when this thing was delivered, as you can see it came on a pallet, uh, but the guy that delivered it couldn't um, drop it off right next to the garage because the road outside our property is a bit sloped. So he actually dropped it off um, further down the road uh, at the bottom of the house where there's a little over, where there's a little bridge and a river um, in a little lay-by. Uh, so it wasn't too far away so I had to sort of get one of the get help from one of the one of the, the local farmers who I know is a good friend and uh, he came along with this big John Deere tractor and we managed to uh, get it into the shack or to the garage. As you can see um, this pallet that's on is not very good I've got to sort that out. Um, I've just been sort of doing some initial cleanup and inspection at the moment before I move this thing to a definitive place which will be um, probably where that tool chest is so that's where it'll probably reside permanently. So as you can see it is in a bit of a scruffy state. I think I think mechanically it's probably alright from what I can tell. The gears and everything work as you can see here. I mean all these work when I push them in I, it's a bit unstable on this thing at the moment so got to be careful but I have actually been playing around with some of these and it, it does seem to when you turn the uh, the chuck it does seem to do what it's supposed to do so I think everything inside here is is I suspect okay the uh, the lathe itself um, is uh, well, where was that signpost here we go it's actually uh, 2009 so for a second-hand lathe that you can afford, this is relatively a young lathe because a lot of these big lathes, you know, this sort of age, uh, you usually pay a lot more for them. Certainly, that's what I uh, looked at when I was sort of looking at the prices of these second-hand Harrison M300s on eBay. Uh, so I've taken the, this is the um, headstock, 
I've got to get my head around all the terminology for lathes because as I said I'm not an expert on this by any means and uh, most of the cog wheels there actually uh, look reasonably okay the two big ones there are made of Delrin or some sort of um, synthetic type material not metal um, that's probably there for a reason um, there is a bit of oil in the tray here uh, I'm not quite sure whether that's actually leaking from perhaps an oil seal or something or possibly uh, as a result of cutting fluid going everywhere um, so it's a bit difficult to say where that's coming from looking at the oil level in the uh, where the spindle gears are um, there's not much oil in there so it could have leaked out possibly I don't know but I'll have to have a closer look at that and see if there is a an oil leak. It might be a seal that may need replacing. Uh, and coming along here, so the if we have a look at the slideways, and um, again these aren't uh, in immaculate condition by any means. There's quite a bit of rust, but I think I think this will all clean up. Uh, as you can see here, I think what appears to have happened is that this lathe, whoever had it before, which I think must have been a company or probably a school or something like that, they probably either had no further use for it and uh, probably stored it outside or in a, in a damp environment. You know, it was never really oiled, or well, the slides were probably oiled and it sort of got into this um, condition. But I think all this will clean up. You know, I'm not, I'm optimistic this will clean up and once it's all, all done it'll look quite nice. The um, the carriage and everything, I mean that stuff obviously hasn't got the uh, the uh, the top part on it. Um, the other thing what happened is this this broke off in transit but actually this feels pretty good. I mean the, the, you know there's not really much play and um, I've, I, that iron that's cast iron I've, um, so I'm gonna have to weld that back on I think. That, that broke during the transit, which was a bit annoying. But anyway, it's one of those things, but it, it can be repaired quite easily, so it's not a train smash. Um, so this was quite difficult to remove. That needed a bit of a knock to get off the, uh, uh, the slide, the horizontal slide or whatever. Um, I've got to get the terminology, is a bit, got to get my head round. Uh, that didn't need a bit of a, a knock to get it off. It was sort of, I wouldn't say seized, but it was obviously quite firmly attached. And then, again, there's quite a bit of superficial corrosion there, but it, but it, everything works, you know, everything sort of seems to be doing the right, what it should do. But uh, moving on round, so you've got a, uh, you've got this big um, coolant tray and then down the bottom there is a is a thing for the coolant to spray over the working um, parts. The um, I've taken the cover off where the belts are. The belts I think we'll, we can replace. There, one or two of them's got some shredding, but I mean they're probably functional. But I'm going to get re re use the opportunity to clean once I clean it all up, replace those two belts. And again. You know the the actual bed it just needs cleaning up you know um which is quite straightforward to do uh so so there we go uh this lathe actually just looking on the floor this is some of the things i've taken off already so it actually came with a, a dro which is quite nice because these things are quite pricey actually but i've taken all it taken it off the uh, the cables are um, again a little bit uh, scruffy, so they're going to need cleaning up. So I'm just going to show you what I've taken off so far, and we can have a look at those quickly. So these are the bits I've taken off. So that's the chuck. This chuck was uh, again needed quite a lot of WD-40 uh, to free it all up, uh, but it did come come off, and it did come apart quite easily and then over here we've got the chuck guard which again really needs a good paint job but that again is easy to do and what else have we got that's the tail stock the tail stock looks pretty good actually I've already made a start cleaning that up and that actually looks it's, it's quite heavy 
but that actually um, feels pretty good, the tail stock. So we'll um, give everything a bit of a polish. And this is the thingamajiggy, whatchamacallit, thing that holds the, um, the tooling. I think this is called the Dixon Quick Change Jobby, you, which is for, um, uh, you can then swap out your tools for whatever you're cutting. And uh, this one works, what do they call this, the cross feed? That actually works reasonably well. It's got quite a nice motion on it. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of cleaning up to do. Um, I think mechanically, I think everything will be fine. Uh, once everything's oiled and cleaned, you know, I think it should work pretty good. Um, so I've, I've got quite a few, got quite a bit of work to do on this. I think this is going to be my, my winter project, I think. Um, if anybody else has got a lathe like this, um, I would recommend uh, a YouTuber called Samuel Fielder, who's a retired physicist. And I've been watching some of his videos because he's done a whole thing where he's taken a, well, virtually stripped uh, an M300. It was a slightly older version than this one. And he sort of totally stripped his down and cleaned it all up and made a very nice job of it. Um, so um, if you're watching Mr. Fielder, you happen to watch this video, uh, thank you very much for all the information. So there we go. Uh, I'll pop, probably put a few more videos on this as we as we do this, and hopefully we should be able to get this lathe working and uh, make some interesting parts. I've got some nice interest. I've got some good plans for this when I get it up and running. So there we go. Quick video. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.